Welcome to the Connect for Windows SDK Quick Start Tutorials. This is the Skeleton Tracking Fundamentals video. So in our last video we saw the working with depth data where we're using skeleton tracking with depth information to know whether a specific pixel represented a player or a skeleton. In this video what we're going to do is actually get the skeleton data and then interact with that data in the specific joint uh, location information. So the way that this works is we are going to sign up for an event, the Skeleton Frame Ready event, and when a skeleton is tracked, um, this event fires, and it returns the Skeleton Frame Ready event args. That event args has a skeleton frame with a lot of data about uh, the aggregate frame, the floor clip, and so forth, the quality. Um, and a collection of skeletons. Now you're going to get six skeletons every time this uh, event fires, um, and of which one or two will have a tracking state of tracked, and those represent up, the up to two players that you can track. And for those players, you'll have a collection of joints that includes the position um, of each of the different joints, like say, where's your head at? Um, now, to illustrate this, is, uh, is this graphic shows the 20 different joints that the skeleton um, data returns. And each of, those, each of these has a position uh, value between negative 1 and 1 on the x, y, and z uh, axes, and z representing how close or far you are from the Kinect sensor. And I think these represent meters, if, if I'm correct, and, and I think it's on another slide as well. But the point here is when we get a skeleton, we look for a, a track skeleton, um, we can then uh, see this whole collection of joints and then decide where to, what to do based on that location of those joints. So just to review here, um, a maximum of two players tracked at once per connect. Uh, there's an XYZ joints in meters. And then uh, there's an associated joint state. So one thing to keep in mind is, let's say, for example, I do something like this where my elbow is actually being cut off. Now, Connect, uh, this is just an example, but Connect could, for example, infer, infer where that ri uh, the elbow is based on the position of my wrist and based on the position of my shoulder. It can kind of say, hey, this is where I think the person's uh, a specific joint is. Um, and that can be occluded, clipped, or low confidence. Um, and not tracked is rare, but it's something you should look, look for as well in your code. So let's go into some demos. So in this demo, we have uh, just a main window. It's in, inside a canvas. We have three ellipses. So the ellipses rep represent different joints that we are going to dynamically move when that skeleton frame ready event fires. Um, for the head, the right, and the left joints. So we're going to move those ellipses based on those values. So let's look at the code here and just jump to the very top. We have our runtime, like we've been doing as usual. We initialize it, and we're going to use skeleton tracking. We're not using any of the camera data, so we don't need to know the camera data. Um, and we sign up for the skeleton frame ready event. Now. Uh, uh, what will happen is this event fires when we actually have a tracked skeleton. So this represents all skeletons. What really I want to do is get the first tracked skeleton. And you can track up to two. And we'll just do that by doing a simple link query to pull the first uh, skeleton with a tracking state of tracked. So now that we have uh, the first skeleton, what we can do is use the set ellipse position and we're going to pass in the left and right hand joints and, of course, the, the head joint. And that, rep that includes the position and whether um, uh, it's clipped or not, uh, the quality as well. So let's add a couple of breakpoints. We'll do one before, one inside. Actually, we'll just do one. We'll jump inside. And let's just click Run. Now, nothing's going to happen until I step off the chair, connect all of a sudden, seize my skeleton, and I'm now at a breakpoint inside that skeleton frame ready event. Now, uh, let's just open up an immediate window and just show what's going on here. 
So we have our, that skeleton. And uh, we can, for example, see the quality of that skeleton. So we can see that it's clipped to the left and clipped to the bottom. A good example of this is, is Connect can actually see, based on its current position, where my feet are. So we could do things, for example, adjust the tilt, or just realize that in our application, and, and maybe give the user some visual feedback that says maybe move back. And some of you may have seen this in Connect uh, titles as well. So. Um, uh, when we're working with a collection of joints, um, what we can do is pass in a joint ID, and I'll say, uh, which is an enumer enumeration, and in this case, I will pass in, um, say, head. And we see that it's tracked, and there is a, is a position for it. Um, and let's just... Uh, do that one more time, and just show you the x, y, z values. So um, these x, y, z value, values are between negative 1 and 1. And what we want to do actually next in our code is actually scale those. And you can decide how to, uh, how to scale those values based on what your application needs. Um, but let's just jump into a simple example. Um, and at this point, we're passing in uh, the joint, and that's a head joint. And we're going to use the scale to, this is an extension method in the Coding for Fun library that scales it. So our, our window, I think, is 640 by 480. And um, what we're doing here is, let me just show you the IntelliSense, it's setting the max skeleton uh, uh, value, so 0.99. Um, of course, one being one being the total max. So this is all just a little under the max, and then uh, the max skeleton y value. And the reason these are used, and it's best explained visually when we go through the application, is sometimes depending on what your application does, you don't want the user having to go the full say two meters back and forth. What you want them to do is to not have to move. Say I'm using a cursor application. I don't want to have to move two feet this way to um, interact with the application. Or maybe you do and you want to keep those values high or even put them um, higher. Uh, in our case, let's just show uh, um, how this works. And I want to remove the breakpoint so we can kind of see this in action as well. Let me just, OK. So now uh, what you're looking at is orange represents my head, green is my left hand, and that gray is my right hand. So what I'm going to try and do is, with that scaling value, we scaled x to 0.99. I want to try and hit the edge of that window, um, which is the, the 640 value. And you see that I can't. I really have to move, move my body all the way over to be able to do that. So um, when you're scaling those values between negative 1 and 1 based on what your application needs, um, what we can do, and I just want to stop this application is set a smaller value. So let's just do uh, 0.5f and click Run. And now all I need to do is move my hand. I'm not, I don't even need to reach my hand all the way out. And I'm able to reach the maximum value. So uh, just keep it in mind, depending on what your application does, you want, don't want to just map a value and say, hey, I want you to go. If you want to go to 0, 0.00, you really have to put your hand up. You can use these scaling values um, to scale a joint position um, based on, on how you want your application to interact. Now one thing you may see is the hands being a little jumpy there. You can see it on the green one there. Um, what I want to do is show you how you can um, uh, eat, have a, a simple way of um, adding quality or, or removing jitter from uh, the joint positions as, as it fires. So there's a number of things that you can do programmatically to do this. For example, you may uh, do intervals. And rather than changing a position, if, there, if it's a really small position, you wouldn't necessarily want to move it like if somebody's hand's just, just moving just slightly. You really may not want, you want that to seem still. Um, 
Uh, and there's a number of, of different algorithms that you can use and so forth. These are things that are built into the Connect for Windows SDK that allow you to uh, control and fine tune how that joint position uh, works. So um, to do this, after we call initialize, set transform smooth equal to true. We have a, a transform smooth parameters. And you can play with these depending on what your application does. What, what might be right for you may not be right for some, as they say. Um, but we can set things like smoothing, correction, prediction, jitter radius. Um, so if you're say, uh, depending on what your application is doing and how it performs, you really may not want it to be um, uh, to feel laggy. And prediction basically allows you to do something, for example, like I predict that you know based on where. Um, somebody's kicking, their, their final foot is going to be here, but maybe it's not. And prediction may be something that you want to turn off. Depend, really depends on how your application goes. And you can set these values and more than anything, test using these values and see how they work uh, based on your application. So we built these uh, applications. And really, what we're doing is setting the jitter radius and the max uh, deviation radius and smoothing. And we're going to set the smooth parameters here. And just rerun our application, and you should see uh, just a lot, a bit smoother in terms of when we move and how that goes. So you can obviously fine tune this uh, based on what your application needs. Um, but uh, what we've shown really is how you can get the skeleton data, how you can get the joint positions, how you can scale them based on what your application needs, and, and setting a max. A value uh, within using the coding for fun library to help do that. You can of course use your own libraries to do this as well. And then how do you can use the transform smooth parameters to fine tune that that joint jitteriness and the smoothing and correct correction and, and prediction. So uh, there's definitely a lot more within uh, skeleton data, but this is enough to get you started building uh, uh, rich deeper applications. Thanks.